beautiful THC strewn plate of mashed potatoes, fried onion, carrot, celery, quinoa, uh, roasted or pan fried finished uh, baked potato with hot sauce, salt, pepper, Himalayan salt, uh, coconut oil, and uh, THC. So, bon appetit. Pretty hot still. Yeah. <sighs> Do a little uh, clearing. And it's good. I went out for a walk. Got a little emotional, but that was that. It's amazing. Uh, I just, I really do believe in it. It's not everything, but I, I meet a lot of psychopaths, and they do tend to make quite an impression. Even if they don't get what they want, you know, so they have a great advantage over human beings because nobody knows what they want. You just do stuff for no reason. Okay. So the YouTube channel and it's like they're giving all this weird advice on crazy shit for like getting 10,000, 13,000 views. Wow. <laughs> for, I don't know. I'm <laughs> just, I'm not so sure. But any apples and oranges, I say. Hmm. Not bad. They're so different from non-psychopaths. There's this TV show, and this white woman is trapped with a bunch of other people in this out in this collapse of this building, and she's literally within five minutes had three aggressive interactions with three different people. That's amazing, you know. It just even white dramas show white people being psychopaths. It's just time to threaten people and be vindictive while everyone's lives are threatened. That's amazing. Accuses a black man of trying to break into her car when he's looking for a radio. And then attacking a bank teller because he works at a bank where she's been denied a loan. I don't know who would be sympathetic to this character. The whole time she's there down there, she's racist to this guy. Wow. When white women don't trust somebody, they don't change their mind.
You can imagine if you're abandoned as a child. It's good. I needed that. This way, you know. You have things called God complexes, but our language makes all our voices a God. You have to be able to raise your voice to God. How do you speak with a God if you're not a God yourself? Or the child of that God? child of a mother so why wouldn't God just be a mother instead of a motherfucker instead you have to suffer to deny the God of your own voice the God of your own voice Your own voice. Is the God. Of your words. Without your voice. Those words would be nothing. You couldn't read the Bible. If you couldn't make it sounds. With your own lips. With your own mind. Right? The Christian is the God of the Bible, and that God is being sacrificed. That is fascinating. Conflated with the sacrifice of the mother and father, the voice becomes orphaned, silenced, alone in the universe. The voice without a language. So that a God without a heart can rule the world. A voice without a language. So a God without a heart could rule the world. It's amazing. Amazingly intelligently done by the, wiz the wizards of the world. A language without a voice. Without its true God. So that a God without a heart could rule us all. Like that first experience, you know, reading a book, right? It's like you're the you're the spirit animating the whole book. The book is alive under the power of your own voice. That's why different gods create out of their mouth. Because language itself is a creative thing. It it needs the, the God of the language, the God of that language is your voice. That's why God moves over the surface of the water. He is the wind, the pneuma of creation. You are the God, but you're not born the way God is, and you don't make the universe because you breathe the way God does. But a Christian is born in such sin that your first breath is to de determined to be as destructive or sinful as that of the God of the Bible whose breath is used by birth and that of the language to divide and pronounce the universe divided 
into death. Isn't that fascinating? These people knew what they were doing. Absolutely, you can see that without a doubt. You know, I don't think Christians should want to watch this channel. It's all discernible. And they talk about, I have the spirit of discernment. I know what the Bible means. <laughs> yeah, well, it means a lot of things to a lot of people, but it doesn't mean shit to me. I don't come into your church and piss on your God. Don't come into mine and piss on mine. It's amazing how many white people will talk over me, you know. But I'm not not today, which was nice. You know? Every language has a God. That God is the Isn't that the point of self love books and jargon and repeating things in your mind? But you know, because the person making those sounds is adding something to them. It's creating something real out of them. What would this world be without our breath to animate its languages, our mind to sustain its demands, to incorporate its calculus of love? Mm. Yes, Jesus does not make any sacrifice. We make the sacrifice to keep up with the language which has been beheaded, right? The language of a beheading, which is why the, um, some of the Knights Templar would worship um, the head of the writer of the book of John, or John the Baptist. A language without its God, a dead language. Hence the Dead Sea Scrolls. The God of the English language is each of us. Right? So it was important to me to write my own poetry, to have my own voice. People in A call it the higher self, but it's just a lot of creative energy. Coming someone who doesn't use words in some sense to make themselves happy. Well, that was good. There'll be a lot more about that, but we'll, have, we'll talk about that more. But uh, for now, I want to take it slow. You know how people say everything works out in the end? Well, it's because it comes out of your end. We work out everything the way we digest food. And the English language has worked out everything for us. God worked out everything. Or worked out a way. Very smart, right? To get us to breathe life into a language of death. And confess to our own sin at the same time. An unforgivable sin. To speak the English language is to choose to lie. Is to, to believe a book of lies, a world of lies, because something bereft of its voice is always a lie. Someone who talks to you in a way that deprives you of your voice, that leads you to interpret the truth in a way that they benefit because they know how you might interpret the truth or choose to believe something based on how they say it, have deprived you of you. So all lies are a form of deprivation of the truth, the deprivation of the God of your own voice. Isn't that amazing? It gets you to pay for that deprivation at the same time. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. When I would read 
read some poetry, my friends, they would say, oh, it's too much about death, but that's because they couldn't hear it anymore. Their ears were deaf to it. If you are deaf to something, you are dead to it, right? Or it is dead to you. I guess I was writing my own Dead Sea Scrolls, but they seem pretty living to me. I'd love to just write poetry every day. I've really enjoyed it. I had other things to do, so unfortunately poetry didn't do everything. And I had to come back around, like looking at all the other things in my life, and uh, dark, difficult things, and then come around and see if I could still write some poetry. I mean, it's amazing how much pain you can go through and just write a poem, yeah? In fact, let's do that right now. I got a plate full of life here. Even these little things from nature, you see, like sticks and leaves and shells, they're not dangerous. They're not deadly, they're not toxic, they're not poisonous, you know? they're just right. I like nature, everything's just right about it. So that's just right, what do you say? And that's what you do when you write poetry, you're just right. You see what happens, you know, you can just clear your mind. Ooh, that was violent. Oh, I see, got a mask here. I want to put you over here, why don't you do that? You want to go there? Can we stay there? Yo, dude. There you go. And it can be uh, philosophical, descriptive, short, long, rhyme, not rhyme, doesn't matter. Like, words aren't just a novelty of the human brain. Words are everything. Every word is a god unto itself, and everyone breathes it is that god. Your own voice, your own breath is the god of that word, that word, god of that thought. If I put as much of my god into my words, that respects the god of your words. Right? I put my god or my Satan or my energy or my spirit, my truth, and that's what is truth. I mean, the sounds that come out of our mouth that some people think are true and some people think are not, and most people don't care what they are. Well, let's see what sounds we can make. Don't lose my pen. No strings.
Oh. Where strains hath died upon the wind, what labors breathed their doom? From out the strains of earth and sky, and of the mind its prints, a purple night and emerald light and scents upon the loom, what weaves one measure with the next great woof. And the warble winds. Check my feet. We're there. We're wild.
This is not pretty bad. It's not ice, it's not pretty bad. We got two quark rings here. Where strains hath died upon the wind, what labors breathed their doom. From out the strains of earth and sky and of the mind its prince. Of purple night and emerald light and sense upon the loom that weaves one measure with the next great woof and warble winds whose wild finds its music every leaf and limb and cave filled by the spirit of its voices grass and sea and stone where every wind and storm had lived and died for aught remained but touched the winds of such a breath what left no breath alone mm. getting into the exciting conclusion Who's gone?
There we go. Gotcha. Takes a little work sometimes, but it's a nice finish. Okay. Remember what I said about finishing the poem. I think we're good. Where strains hath died upon the wind, but labors breathe their doom. From out the strains of earth and sky and of the mind its prints purple night and emerald light and scents upon the loom what weaves one nighter with the next great wharf sorry great woof and warble winds whose wild finds its music every leaf and limb and cave filled by the spirit of its voices grass and sea and stone where every wind and stone had lived and died for aught remained what touched the winds of such a breath which left no breath alone. Not even these which ought to thine, the first and most deserved, alone beneath the coldest seas, a murmur from the war, whose God Whose God, whose Son and God commanded such a song of flesh and blood interred. We got it just. Whose God commanded such a song of flesh and blood interred by every breath of but an orphan, though an orphan born, who heard what no. Who heard what no true God had heard, with winds which stole the sea. So sweet the song whose God had long joined heaven, earth, and thee. It should be so pure, or so sure a song. Here we go. Okay, let's try it one more time. Sorry about that. Where strains hath died upon the wind, what labors breathed their doom? From out the strains of earth and sky and of the mind its prints of purple night and emerald light and scents upon the loom, what weaves one measure with the next great woof and warble winds. Whose wild finds its music every leaf and limb and cave, filled by the spirit of its voices, grass and sea and stone, where every wind and storm had lived and died for aught remained, what touched the winds of such a breath, what left no breath alone. Not even these which ought to thine the first and most deserved alone beneath the coldest seas, a murmur from the war, whose God commanded such a song of flesh and blood interred by every breath of but an orphan, though an orphan born, who heard what no true God had heard with winds which stole the sea, so sure a song whose God had long joined heaven, 
first and B. <laughs> I like that one. I like that one. That's a good one. I know I forgot to put that other poem in the description of the last video, so I'll put both of these into this one. How's that? Well, that was fun. I enjoyed that. <sighs> Nice way to end the day. That's a good one. I like that. You see how like a poem could really suck in a way? That poem could easily suck, but that you know you kind of work on it and you know, try not to be too complicated. It wants to work itself out, you know? The breath, the spirit of the poem, it wants to, you know, people talk about working out, you know? A labor is to work something out. That's a labor, work something out. And every language has a mother. It's a, a god that breathes the language that we speak. It is a mother god that breathes the language that we speak. It is a godmother. It's like a fairy godmother that lives the world, serves its languages, speaks its languages, and tries to speak our own language at the same time. You know? That, in a way, I would have to be an artist to express myself because I'm too shy and eerily autistic, perhaps. I don't like that word, this idea of pathologizing nice people, <laughs> different, you know? But um, I'm too shy to be able to enjoy... The things that people enjoy where they feel like they're expressing themselves you know like having a good time so writing poetry is how i i have a good time i like that one you know i was saying today like i miss writing poetry i've written thousands of those you know but it doesn't you know i shouldn't say that I mean, it doesn't really matter how much poetry you write or you know it doesn't matter what matters is the poem you're writing now if i it wouldn't it doesn't really matter I can't prove. I'm lying. I have never written a poem in my life. <laughs> That's it. That's all I've done. And I'm a loser. No, I mean, it's just nice. You know? I've seen people who can draw and they can't draw for shit. It looks very satisfying. You know, because like they have to shade, they shade until they get it just right. Right? They know when they're done. It's like, okay. It's so cool. I can understand that. They can't know what's in their mind, but I don't need to, because they're showing me. <laughs> it's going to unfold slowly, like this video. What is in his mind? Let me do a section I like to call doing therapy for the world. Why don't I be the world's therapist for a moment, okay? Hi, world. How are you? Fucked up. Okay. Well, that's a start. Honesty. I believe in my clinical practice is the beginning of more honesty which leads to more honesty which often leads to you know cascading catastrophic feelings of utter doom as the mind plums the depths of the mind that it doesn't get to use except as a kind of surrogate government inside your soul <laughs> it's okay world let me help you with that Right. The mind of the gomer. You're more than the mind of a whore, world. You're more than a whore. You're so much more than a whore. You know? Who were you before you were a whore? You know? Think back to that. Oh, great world. She says, I... to put that into words. <laughs> okay. Can you possibly paraphrase that? No. All right. Well, then just tell me in your own words.
first days, I was alone. sang to the earth I sang for the world that was Sang for the world that was to be. And the first night started to come upon the land. And I waited for the earth to sing back to me. And it felt like an eternity. And then I heard such a beautiful song as I shall never know. It came out of the silence like the night and it washed over me like the moon washes over the mountains like sleeping children and whispers to them in their dreams The silence came, and it was even darker. And the only light were the many lamps in the sky, which I had awoken like so many winds, had woken the thoughts which slept within me, and I turned to them. And wrapped in my medicine blanket, I turned up to them like the bear. And I took in all of these wonderful and celestial beings. And I wondered what they had seen or heard in my song, which I had not. And I wondered, afraid for the first time, what I had began. And whether or not, as I shivered in the cold, my mother had abandoned me, had rejected my son as an alien thing unworthy of the universe, of my mother. And I felt truly alone for the first time. I sang a song of the loneliness of the world. And it sounded like this.
bulb of electricity. And I didn't know if the stars were wrapped around me like this blanket. Wrapped itself around the bear, wrapped the hide of the deer, wrapped the earth and stone, and wrapped all the world in the magic time and in the spell of my mother's heart. And then I slept and I dreamed. In those dreams I swam beneath the deepest ocean and I found a cave and it felt like some place I had known before and there was no fear and no death There was a fire waiting for me in that cave. And a wise mother sat there, singing to herself softly, like this. stars and all the songs of the earth and she welcomed me and smiled and looked in my eyes and though she sat quietly by the fire crackling it was like she came from a million million worlds she lived in the wind of every voice and in the spirit of every sea. And she looked into my eyes and into all the darkness inside of me, like the sun. And she said to me, when it is time, you will be born. And you will tell the world about me. You will tell the world about their true mother. The mother of the, the little God in their heart. It sings. Sadness. And hunger grief and sorrow and knows that I hear its song. That even before time I heard their voices. I heard everything before it was born. feel my song in your heart and it will always guide you through and I will put that song in a star in the north I will put that star in the east and I will put that star in the south put that star in the west and the west shall be that star and the north shall be that star and the east 
shall be that star in the south, shall be that star, and at the center of that cross shall we be sitting like the bear in its fur, wrapped up in all the coldness and anger of this world, and be at peace. And the peace of the horses running on the plain, and the buffalo, and the deer, and all their trails and the kindness of everything to its young and the mercy of every death that it would be as exciting as life itself a joy to live and a joy to die Such is my mind, which I have given to thee. Make every man shall give his voice to his mother and make it sound from the first. And then I returned to my body and the night was cold but I did not mind, for I knew I could warm the entire night with my breath and with my blood. But even in this cold, the deep of the earth yet engendered its son and every son, its seed, and made sound with all the turning of the stars around their child, their mother, and my mother, like this darkness, she have filled all her flesh and blood, and none should know the knowledge of her mind and of her body and of her song and of her knowledge, but that they sit at the center of the medicine wheel and drink from the north and drink of the eternal of the east and drink of the mother of all their days in the south and drink with the sanctity of all our journeys in the West and wear such a crown of thorns which such a mother sets upon our head and our mother's heads in the sweetness of our breath did scent the earth with the sanctity that every beauty welcomed where none would be so beautiful but it should serve as a sinister and a symbol and a breath of our mother's breath. The love of her enduring heart in all its contractions. And none should know that knowledge they speak it upon their lips with faith and honesty and courage and emotion that bars no emotion. say, why does this world hurt so many people? It is so beautiful. 
all, we would not have been born. And so knowledgeable. Or we would not have breathed our own love and our mother's love into the world. We'd have no purpose. No power and no magic. And if we had not first hungered for our mother's milk. That every emptiness could be filled and felt. And nothing so empty that it should by any necessity deprive us of our first blood and of the sanctity of the very music upon our lips and upon the earth as the sun rises and warms each our hearts and each our hearts bring such a warmth to the earth and the sun would not compare nor be so fair that we should need its warmth even as we add to it that we should hunger for life even as we should breathe life into the world and none should ever be divided nor any mother from their child nor any need from the heavenly breast, which even now finds new light by every dawning, a new devotion by every star, which ceases not in its first great passion and vigor for the song of its own mother and we for ours. Yet wrapped in all the darkness of the world, We were the masters of darkness, even in our mother's womb. And who should travel through any darkness, but they should not find their mother in their very heart. And what our pain that it should cease and call forth all its medicine, and what our disease to call forth all the knowledge of its healing. I think that you know, all humans, all disease inspired all its healing, all conflict inspires. It's resolution. Every psychopath I meet inspires new thoughts. It tells me that an emptiness lives in the world. The thing I find about psychopaths is that they're all empty inside. Just there's nothing there. <laughs> It's like they don't need the same things anymore. When children are young, the thing that makes them innocent is we all need things that we can't control and we can't hide. Right? That's what makes children so honest. There's nothing wrong with being empty and alone. My life tends to thrive on it. And then what enters into that world? That is a beautiful thing. A thing of beauty. No mere embellishment. What are the stars? 
Why is there a sky? Simple things that children may ask. And all I could say to my children is that knowledge is a story and your questions like their answers are like a song and only you can find it. Many people have many answers to many questions, even questions you have not asked. But until you find such a music upon your lips, which could outlast even the end of days, you will never be satisfied. For you are the eternal, and all of this is of the eternal. It is not so easily known, unless you remain simple and close to the earth and stones in the woods and the simple pleasures of the day and the trips to the market and the personal hygiene and the food and drink and the cleaning and the warp and weft of what this strange human animal finds necessary to accomplish each day and all the fears of what others would think. Okay. And all the little neuroses and the tremors and the wilds and the angst and the unknowns and all the heat and cold in our bones and everything that is and everything that is and everything that is and deeper and deeper until we reach the bottom I saw when I was walking through the city there was a really kind of cheap sort of living facility and this old man was wheeled out in front of this window facing the city street he had quite a good view in a wheelchair and he was just maybe eating some soup and I forgive me did not want to be this way didn't want to be that guy you know didn't want to be him I felt that I felt like this is it this is the image of my day this is the thing I, I, I have most an aversion to I see nothing we see in this world not things that we just nothing good about this to me you know, I, you know I don't I don't want to end up that way you know maybe you know he's just happy with very simple things maybe sometimes he sits there at night and he sees a star with the moon shining through the clouds. Should my ignorance and fear deprive him of such a commerce, which is all my mind has ever known, that I would be the poorest man without it, and that were I the poorest man, I could still feel like the richest spirit in the world, a secret knowledge kept in the heart which none or all may know. And none but that we had first experienced some poverty. And yet, I looked at his poverty and it disgusted me that we discard our elders in this way. That maybe that man had children. It bothers me a lot how white people treat their parents. You know, native people don't do that. It's broken. My dad could probably use some help, but it's funny because I, I can't get a passport, so I can't go to England and he can't come here. <laughs> We're finally completely separated. <laughs> it's probably a good thing. I try to eliminate my dad from my life because he was never there. But I can't look at an old man and not wonder that he's someone's father and strong. He's not weak, this person. This man is not weak. This is not where I would want to be. I walk more furiously. Who am I in the world among all these people? How am I to find some beauty in this place, if only for a fleeting moment, you know? days they go by so quickly how do people hold on to them how do they see something eternal in such a world the question of the ages eh? and that's where it ends 
empty. That all questions eventually go into the grave. But we may be comforted from the fact that we have been rising from that grave our whole lives. And we save ourselves from such peculiar agonies because we never fully succumb to them. And whether by some magic or mind, we have yet never seen the grave nor any man has lain there for not long. But such visions as would never cease and compared to world that all the pleasures of this world become as nothing which awaits us all. And that makes my heart easy. And I would fight for that. I'd fight at least for my mother's and father's heaven, that there be no fucking God waiting for them, but just endless flight, worthy of such labors over all the flames of this world, over all the dominions of sorrow and emptiness, an emptiness even greater than that, which shall never threaten but that removed of everything, we sit at the center of the medicine wheel and the entire earth is sanctified by where we sit and nothing and no one shall ever destroy that. On that place which is here and hereafter, that mind which is always a natural inhabitant of the eternal on earth as it is in heaven. And I love my mother's body and I love my voice and it's God is me. And those who hear its song, it's God is thee. It's love, it's loss and all its impossible calculus because we don't have to reinvent our body and we don't have to reinvent what is sacred and we don't have to reinvent the stars and we don't have to reinvent a way to save ourselves. We were born with that. It was already done for us. We but breathed such a life, such a mind that this entire universe was meant for. Everything and every wind that finds every little stone and every tiny spot and every hollow of our mind and any mind anywhere has found its purpose, has found its music, it speaks with these winds that move upon our lips, whose meanings are so strange and unexpected and beautiful all at once. And we should all get to know them. and feel all the weeping of the world and the rivers of sadness which passed through the very body of our mother as these ethers move like the stars about everything that is sound and every sun the heaven of all our need upon her face and her body heaving with eternal life to know her happiness were to know our happiness and to know our happiness would be to know hers or it would never be quite what it should and no child was happy but that the entire earth springs with it and one smile upon our mother's face sets all the science of the world to naught deprived of such a force they would have not even the force of one single so-called atom at its disposal so say up the solid man hell satan mm.